Cat, it's Maximus here, this time with a review of a relatively cheap uh, Bluetooth speaker off of Amazon. This is this Power Ad speaker. Uh, runs about $40 or $50, which I reviewed a long time ago, this little uh, Altec Lansing Jacket H202, uh, and I paid about 50 bucks for it. Anyway, this is a uh, promo product. I was, uh, <laughs> you know, I get all these emails, and I was searching through this company, they have a bunch of huge batteries, you know, these 50 and 70 amp batteries. Uh, but they weren't going to send me a free $200 battery. Imagine that. So uh, they had this Bluetooth speaker, and I decided to give it a shot. And to tell you the truth, I think it's okay. It is uh, definitely Chinese. There were some issues. They apparently sent me an open box item that had been uh, opened and then taped over and then cut again. Uh, there was no bag or anything. It kept came just like this, so it was a little bit of a loose fit in there. I suppose it's okay. The speaker is actually like a brick. It's pretty heavy, and uh, they actually added a bunch of weight to it. We'll get into that. But the sound, uh, overall, it really isn't that bad. As far as its performance is concerned, it's much better than that old Altec. That Altec now, the H203, is about 25 or 30 bucks, uh, and this definitely gets at least twice as loud. Uh, really, with the weight, they, there is steel in it. Actually, a surprising amount of steel in this Bluetooth speaker. Uh, it is rated as essentially rain resistant. You know, it's kind of a little bit weird because they do IPX7. So it's like, you know, they do silicone, the drivers and everything, so it can take splash, but it has no type of uh, rating for actual water submersion, although I'm sure it'd be relatively okay. But the weight thing, they have this sporty person on the box. I mean, this thing weighs, you know, a couple of pounds. Their issue is, and I'll do a little cutaway. It's this really has to do with the power output. This thing, you know, they advertise 36 watts. It's more like... Uh, somewhere in the range of 10 watts actual continuous RMS output. All these manufacturers this, of these types of speakers rate the peak momentary power output, not the RMS. And I uh, broke it in, ran it maximum volume on the phone, maximum volume on the unit. If you have a more modern phone, then it will synchronize the volume. And had the charger plugged in, and it charges you know, through a standard USB-C. This little side cover here, it does have some pretty good seals, and this is part of where the steel is, is this side cover actually has uh, a steel plate in a great... Oh, it's got stuck. Actually has a steel plate in there, and when we pop it open, there's some type of a magnet or something going on there, because when you open the side cover, it automatically displays the power level for the battery. And to tell you the truth, you know, these Chinese manufacturers are so bad at translation that there is no no mention anywhere of that. And it's actually kind of a neat feature that when you pop the cover, there's the battery light. And when it goes out, you can just wave the cover over it and it'll turn it back on. One thing I was noticing is when I use the auxiliary jack, the maximum volume out of the same phone. In this case, it was a Galaxy uh, S6 I was testing with was less than actually the volume you could achieve through the Bluetooth. Anyway, part of all the steel and everything that they use in this. Oh, another thing that I thought was interesting is it has a 4 amp, uh, 7.2 volt lithium ion battery, 4,000 milliamp hour, seven point, so essentially a 28 watt hour battery. Uh, and so you can use this to charge your phone. You'll get about one charge out of it if you're charging as well as playing music back at max volume. It will probably only last like an hour or something uh, with the built-in battery maybe three to five hours at maximum volume as I was saying earlier when I had to plug in the USB charger getting a little bit of heat here uh, but it, the battery level would maintain the same at maximum output for hours and hours on end so that's how I really determined because the USB power brick is you know the most powerful ones are 2.4 amp and that's why I had it plugged into and it was able to uh, actually, I think, even provide a little additional charge to the unit. Anyway, they uh, I think they made a, uh, some odd design decisions. Part of it is the extra weight with the sporty person. This thing is a bit heavy to really be carrying around with you. 
I mean, it's fine, but still. And I think they did that because they put enough weight to keep it from vibrating itself uh, or walking around. Let me uh, show you that here. That was at max volume, uh, although I did turn it down a little bit for the video. So it bounces around enough where they decided to put a bunch of weight in so it wouldn't walk around. Where I think if it was going to be more sporting... Uh, utilitarian like that that they probably should have just not had the extra weight in it and instead just let people deal with knowing the fact that it gets pretty loud you know for a little bluetooth speaker this would get loud enough for a small coffee shop uh certainly for any kind of like a bedroom stereo in your garage it would be okay it wouldn't be particularly loud if you have a modern phone modern phones support dual channel bluetooth and so you could connect two of these uh, via the, the stereo Bluetooth, and that would double your output. I mean, it's pretty easy to use. They do have a lot of functionality buttons. It is a uh, Bluetooth uh, speakerphone, so it does have a built-in microphone, so at least has an additional feature there. And these are how the lights work, and then you just press and hold the power button to pair. Uh, quite a bit of lights on there, but I think it's pretty easy to see, uh, and I kind of appreciate that better than the tiny little light that I had on my... Altec. Standard buttons, volume up and down, play, pause, uh, answer and end the phone call. If you press and hold the up volume up and down buttons and release after a couple seconds, it will advance the track. So I think that's okay. What I don't like is they should have overlaid the sound. Instead, when you reach max volume, it plays, it cuts out your audio and then plays that sound. The whole sound is like a second and a half long and then it continues to play your audio again. You don't get that if you have the Bluetooth synchronized audio, but on older phones and devices, you have to crank the volume up on the device and then on your you know old phone. Uh, I do like some of the other design features. Uh, you know, it's nice that it has some uh, T Torx 10 screws. They are metal screens on it. Uh, they advertise six drivers. It's four active drivers, two you know base units, and two little tweeters. I pulled the cover off. I'll do that in a second here. That really uh, sound like they are. Uh, doing something, not just fake tweeters. And the audio quality is more than acceptable. Actually, the treble is more than acceptable, so I think that's just fine. It has two passive radiators, and they're built really strangely because they also have pieces of steel in them. And I don't know if that's just to add weight. It's an odd design choice, and I wonder if it's to actually weight the passive radiators just to uh, try to get a little bit more low end, a little bit more bass out of the little speaker. Although I should mention that they do uh, did do a good job of actually keeping the buttons pretty flat and flush with the top of the unit. So they're not going to get as beat up and torn out. And they do have this little lanyard, which actually has screws. So you can replace this lanyard with long one, longer ones. And I think that's actually a nice feature just to be able to hang it from stuff. Although it does not have a tripod mount. Let's pull this front grill off so you can see the drivers. And here we are. It'd also be nice if they like had a you know like this stamp in area on the front of the speaker, and then something different on the back. So because you always you'll always be uh, getting it backwards. Anyway, here's what the front of it looks like. It does actually have two little dome tweeters. This and then this is the weird passive radiator, and uh, both of them actually have steel in them. But these things are pretty crazy. Actually, let me uh, do a little cut so you can see the drivers working. As you can see, they uh, really are flying about in there, so it's really trying pretty hard. There's our little microphone. It does have like a cheaper chi painted Chinese uh, polypropylene inner body, but it is surprisingly thick. And you can hear that. So even though it's a cheap plastic, they just threw a ton of it at it, so it ought to take a few hits. Uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting is actually this is a pretty hard... Uh, it's like vinyl, so it's a rubber overmold, but it's a very high density rubber rubber overmold uh, that they did over the main body. And every all the removable, like the dry, these uh, passive radiators are all uh, siliconed in. 
And so I'm not going to rip those out. And, you know, if I get a bunch of comments where people want me to rip this apart, I'll certainly do it. But I kind of want to use it as a speaker. Anyway, they just have this weird structure here. Let me cut to a to just this passive radiator. This thing flies around a crazy amount. <laughs> So as you can see, this little radiator just goes crazy. And I almost think the steel in there isn't just for weight, but it's just some kind of engineering. Somehow they came up with some engineering conclusion where uh, the added mass creates some kind of reverberation, which, you know, makes it sound like it has just a little bit more volume. To tell you the truth, the one thing that did come with was this little USB cable, which I, or not the USB, but this little uh, link cable. I'm sure it has hair thin wire. Uh, but it does have like a nice little mesh over it. And surprisingly enough, probably ultra thin, but they are gold plated connectors. And they are super, di super small diameter. Something like this will fit through most phone cases. And please store the speaker in a dry, dry and sealed place to avoid water vapor. So it's waterproof, but it can't handle water vapor. Uh, you know, just like to pick that out. Anyway, as far as 40, you know, I haven't bought $140 Amazon speakers. Uh, but as far as this one, you know, if I paid 40 bucks for it, I wouldn't be too disappointed. I would have thought, God, this thing is a brick, hard as a brick, heavy as a brick. It ought to be able to hold up. goes decently loud, and I like the fact that you can use it as a backup to actually charge your phone. And it has the modern Bluetooth support and then the necessary number of buttons to actually use that, you know, advancing and going through the tracks. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.